I'm David Quick. I'm here with Larissa Damron. We're DC Public Library. We're on the DC Reads Committee talking about Good Talk by Mira Jacob. And we have an activity for Good Talk. I got my copy too. It's signed by her. <laughs> I love Mira's signature. It just says, for you. Because <laughs> um, I got it in the world of, uh, in the age of remote virtual programming when it was harder to do signing events. But we're talking about an activity that we thought up uh, and Arissa, you took the lead on for DC Reads to have people create their own little uh, activities. So um, let's just hear from you, like talk a little bit about the book and why we're doing this. So I really love this book, Good Talk, A Memoir on Conversations, both as someone who's kind of only about a year into their journey with graphic novels and all that they are, but also as someone who remembers conversations years later, you know, relives them in the shower, refights those fights. And I really just love the way that Mira leans into the art of the conversation almost and how it impacts the way we view the world. So whether it's conversations with teachers or her son or her significant other, I think it just really resonates with people, even as someone who has not had a lot of the same life experiences, good and bad that she has had. I thought it was really easy to get into her mind and her life through conversations um, and seeing both sides of those conversations and really feeling those conversations on the page. Um, and our discussion or our guide that we're gonna be doing here is all about telling your own conversations and creating your own good talk, whether it's real and you're reflecting on something, whether you're revising it and talking about how you wish it had gone or whether you're imagining it. <laughs> okay. So yeah, before you kind of uh, walk through this activity that we're inviting people to do, uh, say a little bit about how Mira Jacob did this book, like what's, what's yeah. the format and the style that she chose for these, these graphic narratives. So this is really a memoir of her life and of her recent years, especially around you know, turbulent political times, which we can all relate to, um, told through conversations, through collage, um, images of herself, um, you know, background photos, blank pages, that sort of thing. Um, and then she adds in the conversation bubble so that we really get to see, you know, who's saying what, but it's not necessarily about, you know, their faces reacting or anything like that. It's really about letting the conversation and the words themselves drive the story while still having these, you know, photos, collages, cutouts, that sort of thing, you know, reflect the situation and kind of give you some background. But what you're really focused on is, you know, this back and forth between the characters on the page. Yes. And it is, uh, for those who maybe haven't read the book yet, but are watching this, um, it's really striking when you read it because the graphic style, I mean, they are very flat images of these people mm -hmm. and of herself. Um, and yet it's such a dynamic read. Like just each page is just really, really just rich and interesting and just has movement because of that dialogue, but also because of the way that images are composed. So it's, it's, it's really a cool thing that she accomplished mm -hmm. uh, with this style of graphic storytelling that not many people have done even, you know, even as much as kind of graphic novels have become a big thing like mm -hmm. this, this is different from a, a lot of what you might pick up at the comic book store, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So talk about this activity. <laughs> Great. So the idea behind this activity is really putting yourself into the role of Jacob in telling these conversations. It can be your conversation, other people's conversations, past, present, future, those kind of conversations. But it's all about looking at the words and the way that words are used in that conversation more than body language, more than anything else, and letting the words speak for themselves and kind of hit these themes that Jacob is, is writing about about your identity, your experiences in life, about bias and racism and really overcoming these things to live your life in different ways. Um, so I did some uh, physical ones on my hand. I am not an artist. <laughs> um, I think part of why I was really drawn to this book was because though Mira has much more artistic ability than I do already, 
this is something you know that I can connect with because it's not like look at these beautiful hand drawn images all the time. Mm -hmm. um, it's really flat and it's like easily engaging. Um, so what I did for my physical one, I took some photos out of a magazine because I can do that. I can operate scissors. And then I use the comic book bubbles that we have in our guide um, online that you can you know, cut out, use as you wish. And I recreated a conversation that I, as a woman, have had far too many times. And wow. I think what really resonates is that every group has these conversations. Like Mira talks about, you know, the what are you or where are you really from conversations she's been subjected to in various incidents. Um, and so I did this one. Um, the man says, you'd be prettier if you'd smile. And a woman wearing a mask, as we all should now, says, you have to be kidding me. Um, I think women experience this a lot, like you should smile more. And now we live in an age of masks and you'd think it would go away, but we really have not. So I think that's one of those enduring things, kind of like, where are you really from? Or, you know, questions like that, like that Mira really explores in her books very well about, you know, people ask you these things and don't always understand what they're asking or why it's a micro or macro aggression when they're asking you these things or saying these things to you. But you can also do some more lighthearted conversations if you want. Sure. I'm going to share my screen. Um, and show you some more lighthearted conversations we had about this one. Um, one of my favorite movies, 10 Things I Hate About You, has this really great conversation. Um, so I know you can be overwhelmed and you can be underwhelmed, but can you ever <laughs> just be whelmed? Whelmed. I think you can in Europe, an iconic conversation. Um, I created this on canva.com, which is a free resource. Um, kind of imagining, you know, it's a teen movie but it also reminded me so much of something that someone would say, someone would say to a kid or a kid would say to an adult and you'd be like, well, huh. And that kind of reminded me also of the way Jacob encaptures her conversations with her son Z. Um, there's a great one where he's going to stop sharing where he asks um, questions about Michael Jackson and her son says to her, who is better Michael Jackson or Michael Jordan? And she says, that's apples and oranges. And he says, no, Michael Japs Jackson is a human singer and Michael Jordan is a human. And she was like, eh, Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Those are just the kind yeah. of conversations, you know, like they're harmless in a way, like, you know, they just invoke reality in, in many ways. And that's the kind of conversations we're asking people to create and share with us if they feel comfortable, whether you create it online on Canva or um, using found objects, or if you use one of the templates we included in the guide online, um, really just share those with us. We'll get a conversation going about conversations and about how even the mundane conversations stay with us for years. You know, I remember having a conversation that is actually, I'm pretty sure it's from a play I did as a child. And it really captures this where she's like, you know, are you a Republican or a Democrat? And she says, Presbyterian. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the way that children talk just really sure. shows so much about reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's why the book has done really well. Like people mm -hmm. have responded to it is that she kind of uses those really simple interactions to mm -hmm. evoke things that we can all relate to and that mean a lot. And I think, you know, in terms of what women and people of color and immigrants experience, mm -hmm. just, unpack, you know, just, holding that up in a way that's really accessible and um, simple in a good way, in a powerful way. Um, yeah, the conversation in this book will like, some of them are like gut punches where you're like, ooh, that hurts to even like hear someone say that to someone else. But then yeah. there are also conversations that will make you laugh and like have some lightness to it. Um, and they really go back and forth because that's kind of what life and conversations are. You know, there are hard ones, there are light ones, there are easy ones. And she really just encompasses a good variety of them in here. Yeah. Um, and I'll just say, I want you to kind of show the guide that you wrote, but I'll just say, um, before she even wrote this book, I think a lot of these started as kind of blog posts that she put online mm -hmm. and were even a little kind of, you know, kind of look like what you just showed, kind of like mm -hmm. real kind of like cut out collage things yeah. that she created, um, and and you can go find those online like those are still mm -hmm. up and she's still making them you know if you follow her on instagram she's still making these little dialogues so it's it's kind of cool that it um 
you can just really see her creative process and how she approaches mm -hmm. this this format. Um, go ahead, show us this the guide that you made. Yes, so you can find this online if you go to dclibrary.org slash dcreads. It's under activities. Um, here we have this beautiful introduction page <laughs> and kind of a walkthrough. That's kind of what we've been talking about today, what the goal of this is. We have some starter questions we'll go through. Um, and it's really just about using your creativity and leaning into what works for you. We're not all artists, we're not all visionaries on the page, but we can all you know, relate these conversations that we've had. So this will walk you through it and shares information on how to share your art with us on social media. And then we have these questions that will really help you get started if you're stuck about what kind of conversations you have or have had. We have them broken down into adult, teen and kids conversations. Great. Some of the adult conversation starters might be something like, recall a conversation that makes you extremely happy Recall, recall a conversation in which you taught someone something. Um, write a conversation you had with someone following an election. We've all had that recently. Mm -hmm. For teens, we have things like write a conversation with your parents. Um, imagine a conversation you might have had with your younger or older self. For kids, there are things like write a conversation that made you laugh and write a conversation that you might have heard between two adults and really gives them a chance to be imaginative as well. Um, obviously, Mira Jacobs' own work has some great examples that we've included here, including the famous Michael Jackson one. Um, and some more, I really liked this one with her teacher and the essay contest. But then we also have some from other well-known graphic novels, all of which are in our collection that you can um, put on hold and pick up, like The Prince and the Dressmaker, New Kid, Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy, Hey Kiddo, and more. And then we have some room for you to write your own good talk. You know, we all have different ideas of how we want to do it, whether it's between two people, three people, you know, there are one-sided conversations. I think we've all had those. So you can really choose kind of which way it works best for you or start scratch on a blank page. We have yeah. some boxes here and then, you know, different dialogue boxes and setups you can explore kind of based on what conversation you want to write about. But again, you can always start on one and move to another. It's all blank pages and you can't do this wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not a experienced uh, creator of graphic art or e easier, but like, you know, like use stick figures. If this is something that, you know, strikes, you feel kind of inspired to do, if you've read this book, like use stick figures or cut pictures out mm -hmm. of magazines, like um, uh, just, try it out. I think, you know, like you said, we just had an, ex <laughs> an election. So like, I think a lot of us are having little conversations like this that mm -hmm. she has in the book and, um, you know, like make something out of that. It's good. It's good for our minds and our hearts and our souls to kind of make something when we're in the middle of something. And this is an opportunity to do that. <laughs> yeah. And also that makes me think about um, when the pandemic started and people started really cataloging, you know, moments of the pandemic and remembering things and starting kind of archival things about what we were all going through together. This can be part of that, like archive these conversations you remember having. This is a way to form a memory and really showcase them and keep that shared on social media, you know, connect with people through that. Yeah. Um, that guide you just showed, the, those templates are great and I hope people have fun playing with that. Um, you. What you showed earlier, you used Canva. Does Canva have a lot of like little They do. Give me one second use? to pull it up. And Canva is free. There are, you know, pro elements you can pay more for, but you can do pretty much everything on the site free. I'm going to share my screen again. Great. So I just went to canva.com. And if you search quite literally just for comic strip, there are lots that show up. Um, you know, they're already examples, but you can 100% edit them or, you know, keep the characters and change the dialogue, that sort of thing. Um, so we have one here about like classroom etiquette. And it's pretty easy, just like, you know, any other processing software to just click on it, change the, ha, 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 change the um, text, drag and drop, delete. Um, change the coloring of people's clothes, that sort of thing. Canva is very interactive and easy to use that way. And they've got lots of examples of comics that you can start off with if you're not feeling 
artistically inclined with the hand. Nice. Um, so fun. You know, the internet is a big problem, but it's also got all kinds of fun stuff like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, last thing I said is that we've, uh, we're inviting people to make these things, but also then share them. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's our method for sharing them? <laughs> so pretty much on any social media account, um, on Facebook or at DC Public Library, at, uh, Inst on Instagram, we're at DC Library, and then on, Inst on Twitter, we're at DCPL. Um, you can also use the hashtag GoodTalk or hashtag your own GoodTalk, and we'll kind of keep an eye out for those to reshare.